Tolerance is not just a word. It's in action. It's in affection. But I still remember that time when I was thanking both the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, and His Highness, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi. Obviously, the protocol told us that you are not supposed to talk to the Crown Prince. Then I asked the protocol, what if the Crown Prince talks to me? And that's what exactly happened. It's reaching out. Many times we wait for the other person to reach out to you. I think this global conference is for us to reach out to others. That's what we have felt in the UAE. But when we were close together, the Prime Minister of India very smilingly and affectionately told me that Brahma Vihari Swami, the Crown Prince and I, meaning him, we are, the two of us like, are like brothers. That's when the crown prince drew me closer and said, all three of us are like brothers. What more do you want for human fraternity or tolerance than from the heart of the king? But that same feeling we have felt when we met His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, he specially came to the Akshardham temple. Not did he only come, he went inside. But while he was leaving the stone temple, like a simple pilgrim, he sat on the steps to put his footwear. What humility. Every time we have met him for this temple, they have not just asked questions, they have encouraged us to do the best and create an iconic landmark. And talking about His Excellency Sheikh Nayan, I believe for him, tolerance has no limit. Not only has he accepted us, but he respects us and he considers us as a part of the larger family. But it doesn't end there. You know the miracle that happens when you do a gesture of generosity and human fraternity? The fact this land was given, it has united the entire Hindu community and Indian community all over the world for this beautiful temple. But just imagine a Muslim country giving land for a Hindu temple and a leading architect who is an Irish Catholic and the entire consultant is a communist atheist. What a combination for the beautiful BAPS Hindu temple in Abu Dhabi. The whole world has got together in an example of human fraternity. So I would want to tell you that this idea of human fraternity has its roots in the founding father of this nation. As Sheikh Zayed himself often said, to respect every person of whatever his creed or race as a special soul is a mark of Islam. He emphasized that tolerance is our duty. Similarly, our spiritual head, Pramukh Swami Maharaj, also said religion should be that that spreads love and brings us closer together. In the year 2000, the Millennial Peace Summit in the United Nations, where almost 2,000 world religious leaders had gathered, Pramukh Swami Maharaj just left one message which I would want to leave you with. He said, a dialogue alone is not good enough. All you leaders and religious leaders should have dialogue with other religious leaders. When leaders of two religions meet, it lessens the bitterness amongst the followers and creates an environment of peace and harmony. But that dialogue should not be limited to religious leaders alone. It is the responsibility of leaders and opinion makers to have a further dialogue with your followers and your friends. To have a set of dialogue different here and a different there will have no meaning. We need to go back to our followers and our friends and tell them that if there's a Hindu, to be a better Hindu is more important. A Jew should be a better Jew. A Muslim should be a better Muslim. A Christian should be a better Christian and a Buddhist should be a better Buddhist. 
If all of us decide to be better followers our own faith, the world will be a complete human fraternity. There should not be any issues. To emphasize that horizontal spread is not that important as vertical depth of the life of a follower. And thirdly, he said, each one of us should have an honest dialogue with our own heart. Are we really honest to the teachings of our own founders of our faith? Are we truly believers? If we are honest to our own selves, then we'll find harmony and peace all around us. Let me tell you, when you talk to your heart, the world listens. When you talk to the world, the world doesn't listen. So the third dialogue has to be for us within ourselves of where do we stand. And human fraternity as a part of the ending remark of this global conference, first ask the right questions, God will give us the answers. Second, have dialogues at a three level way. Last, when you talk to yourself, the world will listen. But when something emerges from our own heart, it will reach every heart. I'll leave you with one of the classiest friendship which summarizes human fraternity. I would end with Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who was one of the most profound nuclear scientists of India, the most loved president, the most educated, most compassionate. But before he passed away, after writing many, many bestseller books, his last book was Transcendence. Transcendence meaning, can we transcend the divisions and fences that divide us? Dr. Kalam became friends with a Hindu spiritual leader, Pramukh Swami Maharaj. Look at the contrast. Kalam had 48 PhDs from 48 universities. The Hindu sadhu was hardly educated. Kalam was a scientist, the sadhu was a spiritual man. Kalam was in a position of power, the president, the sadhu technically had no position. Kalam could not understand Gujarati, the language of the sadhu, the sadhu could not understand English. Kalam was a profound practicing Muslim and the sadhu was a leader of a Hindu faith. But when they met, a heart-to-heart -heart talk, fraternity emerges if it's not a mind-to-mind -mind talk or a mind-to-heart talk, it has to be a heart-to-heart -heart talk. And then Kalam writes that Pramukh Swami Maharaj was the ultimate teacher of my life who showed me that there is a world beyond differences. If such a friendship can happen across language, position, power, education, and growth, I believe all of us are capable of reaching out to each other through the heart. And when you talk to the heart, I'll leave you a message. With all said and done, while you are leaving the conference, there will still be some whispers and stray voices telling us that human fraternity is just a dream. It just can't be possible. But I'm here to tell you that so was landing on the moon once a dream, but it happened. So is colonizing Mars a dream, but it will happen. It is because we have stopped dreaming that nothing really happens. And what better place to dream about human fraternity and work towards human fraternity than the UAE which has given home to hundreds of dreams and realized the future of mankind. Let me leave you with a thought that whatever happens, our effort as sincere individuals to live the dream of our founders, of the founders of our faith, when one day, long after you and I are no longer here on earth, Long after you and I are no longer here on earth, 
the world will still say love is stronger than death peace is stronger than war and harmony is stronger than hate thank you very much please keep me in your prayers as i shall keep you in mind thank you again شكرا للموقر سوامي براهما فيهاري على هذه الكلمه With great thanks to Brahma Vihari Swami and to all our speakers this morning. أسادة العلماء الأجلاء أصحاب المعالي والسعادة ضيوفنا الكرام. بهذه الكلمات نكون قد رفعنا سقف التوقعات إلى سماوات بعيدة ونحن بعد في بداية هذا المؤتمر. وعليه ندعوكم إلى الاستراحة القصيرة الثانية ونلتقي بكم بعد خمس دقائق من الآن لنبدأ أعمال هذا المؤتمر في جلسته الأولى المعنونة بمنطلقات الأخوة الإنسانية والتي تترأسها معالي نور الكعبي وزير الثقافة وتنمية المجتمع بدولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة وشكرا لحضراتكم على حسن الاستماع Your Excellencies, Your Eminence, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen We invite you to enjoy another short break before meeting you back here in five short minutes to begin the first session of the conference entitled Principles of Human Fraternity, led by Her Excellency Noura Al-Kabi, UAE Minister of Culture. Thank you all very much. <laughs>